Hey everybody, Shane back with here from Guitar at Work. Welcome back. Nice, fun, and easy Tom Petty song. It's called The Face in the Crowd. Always been a favorite because it's such a great groove. Let's get this going. I'll just play a little bit for you. One, two, three, Tom Petty's Face in the Crowd. I think you're gonna love this because it, again, it's just a real groove tune. Uh, you got five chords in there, which most of, I think most of us are gonna know all of them. So we'll do, uh, run through very quickly, run through those chords and also a strumming pattern. Um, where to put your accents is a big thing. And that's why it's a groove is de highly dependent upon accents with your musical punctuation. Let's just talk a bit about that. Um, it's nice to do something, like, to talk about things like that on a sort of a slow moving song like this because your left hand is not very difficult and we can focus more on the right hand and bring some of the detail to life. Um, but I want to thank you for coming back and all your questions and thumbs up about the world here at, uh, on, in YouTube land. And uh, as always, I will send you to uh, patreon.com slash guitar at work uh, to grab the sheets. I'll be, I'll be referring to song sheets the whole time. Uh, patreon.com slash guitar at work. You have one song, uh, sorry, one sheet with the song on it and the other sheet with some details, strumming patterns. And toward the end, we'll throw in a little bit of lead stuff. I've got some good, really had some great feedback on that. We'll do it right towards the end for those of you who want to stick around. How might you play lead on this? if you're jamming with somebody and some of the fills we'll talk about that he's doing in there I've written a couple down for you and uh, that's that so if what we need so far and I'll be using proudly affiliated with Singular Sound the fabulous Beat Buddy drum machine that you heard on the way in let's talk about that I'll use it all the time I've used it for years long before I met up with them and also the Eros Looper toward the end I'll just get a little bit of looping going we can talk about how you might jam on top of that so bear with me here now we're going to E minor you're looking at your sheet E minor just very quickly through the chorus and we're going to get right to the full speed play along E minor there we go, and there's a C. I think we all know and love that guy. C, there you go. You're gonna find a D in this song as well. There's an A minor too, and of course, and only one other chord, and don't shut things down yet, is a B minor. If you're struggling with your B minor, if you're still struggling with your B minor, you might be tempted to avoid songs that have it. Don't do it, don't do it, jump right in. This is the perfect song, because again, it's fairly slow moving. You have a fair amount of time to get there. So B minor, let's talk about some ways that you might uh, you might fix him up for life, and it opens the doors to so many songs. That's a B minor, that's the one there. That guy there. And those are all your chords. As for strumming pattern, I'm gonna sit on this E minor here. It's straight down. You're going to see on your detail sheet here, I've got it here. On your detail sheet, the strumming is simply down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. We're counting that this way. One and two and three and four and. Now, if you just did this, it's technically correct. But it sure ain't musical, is it? It's not musical. Music, again, it comes in the form of punctuations. If I accent beats two and beats four, that's the opposite of what most of us want to do at first, okay? You're going to want to accent one and three until you get that, get rid of that. You got to flush that. We want two and four. So that would be this. One and two and three and four and one and two. So much music that does that. One and two. I've written a little squiggle over top of beat two and beat four when you're in your strumming pattern. That's an accent marker. It's like an upside down V kind of thing. If I go three, four, one and two and three and four and one and a huge big deal. Um, now you have to trick your brain because when you change chords you'll be changing on a soft one. Okay so let me do it this way. Soft and loud and soft and loud and soft and loud and soft and loud. C. Soft and loud and soft and loud and soft and loud. Going back to E minor. Loud and soft and loud and soft. Remember, your body wants to accent where you change chords, so don't let it do that, okay? Don't let it do that. Fight that out for sure. And what was the other thing? Soft and loud. So, 
When you, when you accent something, there's a tendency when you hit harder to go faster as well. That's where something like a Beat Buddy drum machine really helps you because it's a drummer, it's not gonna move. It's, it's gonna stay nice and solid and you have to come back to it. Uh, we all do that. The harder we hit, the faster we tend to go. To our right hands, for some reason, uh, louder seems to want to mean faster. We have, to, we have to get rid of that habit and you'll be able to play nicely with other people for sure. Um, a metronome or highly recommend the Beat Buddy. You'll find uh, all the links down below. Uh, in the in the description links and uh, if you use the promo code GAW10 you'll get 10% off helps to support the channel I appreciate it there's the advertising here but it's a really great product guys and I've got so many of you that uh, have purchased them and sent me questions and tell, tell me of your successes I really appreciate that I know it's a valuable tool for sure it's a whole lot more fun than a metronome right it's a whole lot more fun uh, so there's our strumming pattern and if you're listening to this one two three four one two three Here's a snare drum, one, two, three, four, one, two. That's where we accent, so it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's where the snare drum is. And for you Beat Buddy people out there, I'm using the Blues One pattern. It's such a great pattern. It's uh, There's nothing inherently bluesy about it. It's just they're, they're trying to make the distinction, I think, between the rock and hard rock stuff. Blues One pattern, fabulous pattern. And uh, I'm at 106 beats per minute. 106 beats per minute, the Blues One pattern. And uh, let's go right directly into a uh, full speed play along. But first, to those people that might be struggling with a B minor. Okay, B minor, I have a video, uh, I'll put it up, I'll put a link to it here somewhere, uh, that talks about uh, how to get, how you might get there. Um, the biggest thing I see with people who are struggling with it is if your thumb is up like that, you're doomed. Okay, if your thumb is over like that, you're ruining all your, your squish power. You're just not gonna, it's not gonna happen. You won't be able to straighten your first finger. People think there's something wrong with the wrist, not the case. So I'm gonna bring my wrist down and around like that, down around toward the floor. Yeah, there you go. If you were sitting in front of me, I'd be going towards you like that. And there's my shape. I'm going to be right on the silver fret that you see there with the first finger and then roll your finger to my left. I'm rolling my finger to my left, kind of using the side of my finger and that helps to get rid of some of the little buzzes you might be picking up. And this is vital. So thumb is down low. That's huge. Wrist is low like that. And also a little pull from the left shoulder. It's not all squish power. It's not all about a vice grip. It's not. So, so there, you'd never do this, but there's a B minor with no thumb. That implies a little bit of pull from here. And that will save you, save you the aches and the cramps uh, as you're getting to know it. If you're cramping up, remember you're doing something wrong. So watch out for that. Um, now to get to the B minor, if, if B minor has been your nemesis for a while, let's do this in real time. Leave the previous chord early to get to the B minor on time. So you might be coming from, where does it come from? Uh, uh, from A minor. It's gonna go to B minor in the chorus. I'm gonna leave early one, two, three, Forever. Keep on strumming and land on the B minor on time. And get this, when it's time to hit the B minor, strum it anyway, even if it's not perfect, and you learn to fix it on the fly. Which means I'm going, oh, two, three, four, there we go. It took me a second to get everybody on there, but the right hand learns to keep going and you fix it on the fly. Those are really big, those are really big things when you're playing with other people, okay? Watch out for that because not everybody's gonna stop and let you get to the B minor. So you need to be able to keep going, even if there's bumps and bruises here and there. So everybody's understanding about that. So here we go, full speed play along. I don't feel the need to do a slow play along because it is fairly slow. It's at 106 beats per minute and the chords are fairly manageable except that pesky B minor. Um, so just, I've got it here on my trusty iPad. I'm gonna go all the way through and try to speak out the lyrics and sh shout out the odd chord. And the big thing about this one is I know you can play the chords, but get into the groove, okay? It's the groove. There's nothing flashy happening in the left hand. This is all about settling into a groove. So let's get our beat buddy going here at 106. One, two, three. I'm going to let him go for a sec. I'll count you in. Intro, okay? One, two, three, E minor. Go. One, two, three, four. One, two, C come. It's four beats for every chord, every time you see it written. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, C coming. Whatever. First verse, E minor. For all of this. Ever went back? E minor, another place. See another town. So your accent? Chorus D. You were just A minor coming, facing the crowd. D. You were just A minor facing the crowd. 
here it comes. Go early to the B minor. Two, three, one, two. All right, let's street. A minor, walking around. E minor, facing the crowd. Good, C. Second verse coming, E minor, out of the dream. C, out of the sky. E minor, into my heart. C, to my life. D chorus, you adjust. A minor, face in the crowd. That's a D coming, you adjust. A minor, face in the crowd. B minor, here it comes, out of the street. A minor, thinking out loud. E minor, face in the crowd. This is instrumental at this point. C. D coming. Instrumental section there. C. Back to D. Next verse coming. E minor. Out of a dream. Out of a dream. C. Out of the sky. Into my heart, C into my life. Last chorus now, D coming. You were just A minor, bass in the crowd. Here's a D coming. You were just A minor, bass in the crowd. B minor, out in the street. A minor walking around. E minor facing the crowd. C. Now big long jam. E minor. Outro. E minor. C. Repeat. Last one here. E minor. Da -da. I'll stop it there. Now that outro goes on and on and on. A uh, nice big jam at the end. So, um, and I wanted to mention to you, as I try to always mention to you, that was a full speed play along. Hopefully if something bad happened, supposing you missed a chord or you went to the wrong chord, you kept on going, right? And you may maybe meet me on the next E minor, whatever you have to do to get back in. Again, that's good recovery skill stuff. The only way that I found the only real way to learn that is to throw yourself in the deep end of the pool and just go. Great thing about this is you can rewind, 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 play along, make it a daily thing. You're never really done playing along, right? It's not like you've learned it and you can move, you can move on, but you want to go back once in a while and uh, consider it almost rehearsal or daily maintenance and play along with stuff. Um, and again, those sheets are available at patreon.com slash guitar at work. Patreon doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment. There's a whole bunch of songs up there. I've lost track of how many. You can download everything and play along with all of these videos and uh, hopefully it's going to help you. That's great, that's great. Okay, now looking at the lead stuff, I'm looking at the detail sheet. For those of you that want to learn a little bit of lead stuff, we have seen this scale before. Uh, this is the E blues scale. This song is in the key of E minor. E is in Edward, E minor. And there's your, probably your number one choice is E pentatonic minor, um, which is often referred to as E blues as well. There is a small difference that, that the blues scale is a six note scale, the pentatonic scale is a five note scale. Who cares about all that? You want to learn this one? It's right here, zero, open E. Here it is here, I'll play it through. up must come down okay, that's the E blues scale it's a pentatonic minor scale with an additional note and that additional note is the blue note which is a really sexy kind of a note um, so you'd want to uh, as for what fingers think if it's on the third fret use your third finger if it's on the second fret use your second finger on the first fret use your first finger so it's pretty it's the open position it makes kind of makes sense that way that's what I'll call um, the, the first the first example of that, the extension, which is a big thing. Some people call it something else. It doesn't really matter what you're calling it, box two or whatever you're calling it. The extension is this. You're seeing that on that detail sheet. Zero is an open, and then second fret, third fret, same string. Fourth fret, G there. And I'm gonna tuck over here, third fret of the B, fifth fret of the B, 
third fret of the high E, fifth fret of the high E, and then here's your sixth. Notice that last note, you can't really stay on that guy. That's your blue note, so he's really for effect, kind of a musical slang almost. Let me do that again from the top. Here's your the extension as I've written here. Open, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. I'll back it up again and talk about fingering. This is a different fingering than the previous thing. I'm going to open, and first finger, second finger, third finger, and I'm taking them off as I go, then tucking in. First finger tucks in like that, third fret of the B, fifth fret of the B, high E, third fret, and fifth fret, the high E, sixth fret. Go backwards, fifth, third, fifth, third, fourth, third, second, zero, and you can go right back down. Previous one. They are the same scale, the same notes in a different location. So you mix and match them however you want. There's advantages to having the two. Um, I've written in that. What would you? What, what might you do with that? Okay. So I'm gonna get a. Uh, I'm gonna get a loop going here. I'm gonna go. All I have to do is go to the song menu, open up an empty song. This is the Eros Looper by Singular Sound. Again, proudly affiliated. The links are in the description below. Looping is is absolutely one of your best practice tools. It simulates playing with others. Okay. It's a really really big deal. Um, I love this looper because you can see it. It's got a big graphic display that I'll put on here in a second. It's really hard to mess this guy up uh, as like where you are, when to click the button. What I love about it is the Beat Buddy is talking to the Aeros Looper. You just plug it in. It's MIDI cable. You just plug it on in and it just works because it's the same company and they just, they talk to each other beautifully. Um, when I start the Beat Buddy, it will begin the, uh, the Looper recording. It'll start recording. So the Looper will record when I press go on the Beat Buddy. It'll give me a four count. It'll go one, two, three, four, and then we're in and the thing is recording. And what I really love is you can stop the loop anywhere within the last bar, anywhere within the last four beats. So you don't have to be right on the money. Whoops, oops. <laughs> Great thing is you can stop it anywhere in, uh, you can stop it anywhere in the last four beats. So you don't have to be right on the money and hit that switch. If you're, if you're playing something complicated and you can stop it anywhere in the last, in the last four beats kind of thing. And, um, so yeah, Beat Buddy will talk to the Aeros Looper. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, there's a, a great graphic display you're gonna see here in a second. I'm just gonna loop the main part. I'm gonna go E minor to C, E minor to C, and I'm gonna do two bars of each, two counts of four on each. So here it comes. Remember, I'll start the Beat Buddy, and then four beats later, the thing's gonna start recording. Let's get you a shot of that. Beat Buddy starts, what? Two, three, E minor, off. Looper's recording. C. Shutting it off. Here we go. It stopped perfectly, and you see the graphic display there? I know exactly where I am. Down and on down. Now here's the scale over top of that. Just the scale. I'm not trying to get musical with it just yet. There's some notes you can sit on. Other ones sound a bit sour. Listen to this. Look. Keep moving. Keep moving. It's all about when you stop. So that bad note was in there, but in passing, it's a beautiful thing. It's stylistic. Bluesy. Here's your extension. So you can jam on top of that. Now I want to show you, um, there is, there is um, a couple of ideas that in, in the song that they play, uh, the guy's playing it on slide guitar, I'll just do it on normal guitar because that's probably what we're all doing. Um, slide's a whole different thing. But there's this idea here, in the very bottom of that detail sheet you're seeing this. A two to four with that little slur indicator means play the second fret of that G string and slide to four. Sliding from the second to the fourth. And you may overshoot, uh, just don't press too hard because then you're just too much drag as you're trying to move up. Uh, you, you may overshoot, you may undershoot, and if you're cutting your finger or something, you know you're pressing too hard. Remember, just whisper on it. And there's your two to four SLs written over top. Slide, and we go to the fifth fret of the B. There we go. And the second one is this guy here. There we go, so that's a slide, two to four. Now pull off, P-U, P-O means pull off, zero, two, zero, and then pick the two again, and pick the zero again. So we're getting this. There we go again. Number one is this. Number 
number two is this guy. There you go, that little bit of wobble. That little bit of vibrato. Um, it just, you're trying to imitate a singer's voice, right? Uh, if you just sit on it, it just, eh, it's like a sine wave. You know? Just personalize it a little bit. I'll just make sure we're good. Here we are. Uh, so let me put that in context. Starting off the beat, buddy. Now there's something already lo loaded on the looper. Just starts playing. I love it. Okay, we're going to put that in. Number one. Here it comes. I like it. I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to add to it the next time. Here it comes. It's out of the scale. It works. I'll add some more. That's it. Notice I came back every time. I went back to that last note, that five, the fifth fret of that B string, which is an E note, uh, knowing that it's a real safe note, it's very, very safe. So it's it's good it's in a key of E minor, and E is a great note to stop on. It's very consonant, and it's not risky at all. So he should be blinking red as a safe place to stop. You can doodle around in the scale a little bit, as long as you land on that good note to, to wrap things up. The second one in there, let's put that in context. Two, three, let's see where we put it. There you go. I'll end it there, just because it feels like it wants to end there. Number one again. Two. So endless, endless, endless ideas that you can do in there. And remember, by, by learning that scale, you can apply it to thousands of songs, thousands of situations. So you're not just learning the scale for this particular song. Um, I want to thank you all for coming back. It's a ton of fun. Get those sheets at patreon.com slash guitar work. Singular sound uh, for the Beat Buddy drum machine, which I absolutely love. I've been using it for years, and I absolutely love it. I use it all day long. And now this is the Eros Looper by the same company. Um, you, all the links are in the description below, and you'll get 10% off if you use the promo code GAW10 at checkout. So go grab those guys and send me questions if you have them. I love the way these two pair together. It's absolutely just magic. They're just perfect. They've come out of the box and they work. So I'll ge generally desperately recommend them to you. How about that? And always fun. Glad to hear from you. Thumbs up me in the world here and I appreciate it. Let's just jam out. Ready? One, two, number one now.